Welcome to this Around the Storage Block video blog. I'm your host, HPE Storage Guide, Calvin Zito. In this video blog, I have a demo for you looking at 3PAR and VMware VVOLs. Haven't done a demo of VVOLs in quite some time. In fact, I think when last we did it, there wasn't a lot of functionality in the Store Serve Management Console other than being able to see a VVOLs. So what I want to do is show you a demo of getting everything you need to get uh, VVOLs working on a 3PAR. So let's jump into this. First, we'll look at the show license command. And we're going to do this because we have to validate that virtual copy is licensed. I'm going to use the show host persona to see the 3PAR host persona setting of 11 for the ESXi hosts. And then I'm going to use the show VASA to check if the IP address or FQND is used in the VASA URL. We'll use show cert to see the current services and certifications. And you can see there's no VASA service listed. So we'll use create cert to create a certification for the VASA provider. We'll grab the URL for the VASA provider and add it to our command to certify it. We'll again use the show cert to see current services and certificates, and note we can see the VASA service has been added. Now we'll use the show VASA to check status. It's disabled. We'll use start VASA to start the VASA provider, and we'll again use show VASA to check the status, and now you can see it's enabled. Now let's go to the 3PAR Store Serve Management Console, or SSMC. From the 3PAR Mega Menu under VMware, click on the Storage Containers. I'm going to create a storage container by supplying a name. This creates the underlying virtual volume set automatically. From SSMC, we can see there is now a virtual volume container. Back in the CLI, we'll do the Show VV Set to show that the uh, VVOL is there. And we're also going to do the show VVOL SC. SC stands for storage container, and you can see it there as well. Now we're going to look on the ESXi host, and we're going to use the ESX CLI storage core device list, PE only, to verify the protocol endpoint. And we can see it's true. Next, we have to register the VASA provider in vCenter. So we're going to select our vCenter server, and in the Configure tab, select Storage Providers and add a new storage provider. We'll give it a name. For the URL, we're going to copy and paste it from the 3PAR Show VASA output. And then we have to supply the login information to the 3PAR array. Next, we're going to verify the VASA provider thumbprint in vCenter with 3PAR. And the first time you register the VASA provider in vCenter, you will receive a security alert and an operation failed message. This is normal. Verify that the thumbprint in the security alert matches with that on the 3PAR as it's displayed by the show VASA cert command previously. Next, we'll look at the VASA provider registration and complete that in vCenter. Notice the status of the 3PAR VASA provider is online and active. Click the online and we'll show the following supported profiles, storage profile based management and replication profile. Clicking the active line will show the following supported profiles, block device profile, capability profile, and virtual volume profile. Next, we're going to create the virtual volume storage container or the data store in vCenter. A VVOL storage container is a pool of storage capacity where all the VVOLs reside. We'll create a new data store of the type VVOL. We'll provide a name for the data store. The backing storage container, which was defined earlier on the 3PAR called VVOLs, will show up indicating everything is progressing normally. The 64 terabyte maximum size is just an indication and not the actual size of the VVOL data store. VVOL data stores are logical entities, and you can't specify a size for them. Once complete, the VVOL data store is listed alongside the VMFS data stores. In this example, the capacity reflects the overall capacity of the array. 
Next, let's look at protocol endpoint and multipathing in vCenter. All vVols inherit the protocol endpoint multipathing policy. From the ESXi host, select configure, and then protocol endpoints to see the PE. Notice the PE has a LUN number of 256. Click on the three par PE to see the properties section and click on edit multipathing to change it. Next, we want to create storage profiles in vCenter. Storage profiles are created from the capabilities that the three par array advertises to vCenter via the storage profile base management or SPBM subsystem. From the policies and profiles menu, click on VM storage policies and create a new VM storage policy. Select the enables rules for HPE 3PAR store serve storage. The add rule dropdown lists all the 3PAR capabilities that are available to vCenter. Note this setup is running a 3PAR OS 3.3.1. Capabilities will differ in other 3PAR OS versions. We're going to create a 3PAR gold policy and for this we'll use an SSD RAID 1 for data. We'll use FC RAID 5 for snapshots with thin persistence enabled and everything else disabled. The workflow for creating a VVOL VM versus a VMFS VM is the same other than picking a VVOL storage policy from the VM storage policy dropdown. If the three par gold policy is selected, only storage that can satisfy that policy definition is listed as compatible. With VVOLs, thin provisioning is array based and no longer done in vSphere. And thin provisioning is also the default format for the VM disks. Now let's run through the same thing again and we're going to create a silver policy. So the process is the same, it's just we're going to use a, a little bit different set of attributes for our three par array. So in this case, we're going to use FC RAID 6, which is fast class RAID 6 for the main storage provisioning group. And then we'll use the same thing for our snapshot common provisioning group. You can see thin persistence is enabled. Thin deduplication is disabled because we're not using SSDs. Adaptive flash cache is disabled. Click compression and keep it disabled. And SCM cache, keep that disabled. So you can see my gold policy, and here's also the silver policy, and those are good to go, and we can use them now. So we're going to go ahead and create a new VM. We'll run through all these steps to create a VM. So most everybody's going to be familiar with doing this, so we'll just watch as these steps complete and give the VM a name. We're going to pick for this VM, we'll pick our three-part gold storage policy that we just created, which we know is a VVOL data store. Click Next. Click Next through a couple of these things in terms of the basics of setting up the VM. And we get to here now customize the hardware. Here we're going to turn on thin provisioning and then continue with creation of the VM. Now it's going to run through this step of creating the virtual machine. I'm going to fast forward through this a bit so that we can uh, get to the good stuff. We'll click on the virtual machine name. And now we can see the storages of Evol Data Store. Now we're going to go into SSMC. And we can see there are two VVOLs after we've created Pluto, our VM, but before we've powered it up. Click on the drop down and look a little closer at these VMware VVOLs. You can see one is a config VVOL type and the other is a data VVOL type. And again, this is what we get when we first create a VM but have not powered it on. So we'll go back into vSphere and let's go ahead and power on this VM. And now that that VM is powered on, let's go back into the SSMC and see what we've got now. Now we can see there are three VMware VVOLs. And when we look a little bit deeper in SCM, we can see that this third VVOL file that's been created is a swap file. 
Now how about if we create a snapshot? I'm not going to copy the virtual memory. And we've already created the snapshot. We'll go back into SSMC. And now we can see there are four VMware VVols. And we can see that it's already indicated that one of them is a snapshot. Look a little bit closer. And now we can see that there are four files, the config data, a second data file for the snapshot, and the swap file. How about if we look at the CLI and we'll do a show VVOL command and see what we can get there. And there we can see the Pluto VM and we can see we have a total number of four virtual volumes. We'll look at the detail now with another CLI command and now we can see that same information in the CLI. That I've got a config, two data files, one of them a snapshot, and the swap file. How about if we take another snapshot and I think you can predict what's going to happen now as I take another snapshot. We'll go into the 3PAR CLI and issue the command so that we can see the VVOLs again. And now you can see there's a third data file for the second snapshot that we've just created. Let's go into SSMC. I'll use the drop down to pick the map. And now you can see a tree view of the VVOLs objects. And you can see all these different objects from the VVOLs that we've created from the virtual machine level, the objects that the VVOLs have created, and then down to the snapshots. I think another interesting thing to show you will be that we can change the policy that I used. So instead of using gold for this Pluto virtual volume, we're going to change it to silver, that silver policy that we created. So in vSphere, you can see the VM is being reconfigured. It's going through that process of reconfiguring it to use the, the new policy that I've issued for the Pluto VM. It's just about done. And now it's completed. We go back into the 3PAR SSMC and we can see the VM is now using the silver policy. So what do you think is going to happen if I power off the VM? How about if we do that and let's see. Let's go back into the vSphere client. There you can see Pluto, my VM. I'm going to right click on it, go to power, and then we're going to click on power off. And now we've powered it off. After powering it off, there are now four VVOL objects. The swap file is no longer there, so, and it's been deleted. Now let's delete the VM, and I'm sure you can guess what the results of this will be. Then I'm going to delete the VM, go back into the CLI, and you can see that there are no, no longer any files there. We'll go into the 3PAR SSMC and poke around here, and we can see the VM name, but all the files associated with the VM are gone. And by the way, the capacity has been automatically returned to the free pool. This is an important point. This is one of the great features with VVOLs, that you don't have to manage the unmap and go through and do a issue an unmap command. It's all managed automatically, and the cleanup's been done. And now we can see the actual Pluto VM has been wiped away. To learn more about 3PAR, go to hpe.com slash storage slash 3PAR. Always love hearing from you on Twitter, where you can find me as Calvin Zito. Our blog is at hpe.com slash storage slash blog. Until next time, thanks for joining me.